previously on five points of articulation. If you don't like where things are heading, the best thing that you can do is vote with your wallet. The environment might be part of it, and I do hope that there's a compromise we can find, but I have no doubt that this was a money decision and ultimately money talks. So, we won? Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Today, we're taking a look at the Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Basic Assortment by Hasbro. Last time we were talking about one of these figures, we were dealing with this. And let's just say I didn't have the kindest words to say. I mean, it could be in there. Or it could be a voodoo doll made out of toenails. Guess you won't know until you buy it. I did, however, have some pretty constructive criticism too. What baffles me about this is that they already had an open box design for their deluxe figures. Granted, there's a small amount of plastic, but they couldn't figure out a workaround for that? This $90 pack of figures managed to solve the problem with twine. After months of warming the pegs, these all went on clearance and were replaced by these. And at my local stores, they can't keep them in stock. I'm sure the Spider-Man brand has something to do with it, but I also believe that seeing what you're getting has a lot to do with it as well. This, of course, is for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse and includes the main characters of Miles, Gwen, and Spider-Man 2099. And wait a minute, what about this guy? inspired by Into the Spider-Verse? So Peter B. Parker isn't going to be in this one? That's kind of a bummer. Still, it does make way for Spider-Man 2099. I can see how the risk of theft could make this not so great for a Marvel Legends, but for a kid's toy it's absolutely perfect, and it gives me a lot of hope that Hasbro has the potential to course correct. For packaging, I'm giving across the Spider-Verse one whole point. Red, red twine! Moving on to presentation, the figures range from five and three quarters to six and a half. Near as I can tell, these are mostly reused from the Into the Spider-Verse wave. Peter and Gwen are the exact same, but Miles is a little bit different. The arms and legs are the same, but the torso is a new sculpt. And therein lies the problem. The original torso had sculpted webbing on the upper chest, so the webbing on the head made sense. Here, it just kind of reminds me of the old Ralph Bakshi Spider-Man animated series. What baffles me the most is just how badly scaled these are. Peter is basically the same size as Miles, when really he should be closer to the size of Spider-Man 2099. I actually think a lot of it has to do with the packaging. The Into the Spider-Verse wave came on blister cards, and I can't help but wonder if they just want them all to fit in the same bubble. The open box gives it a bit more room to breathe. That said, of the original three, Peter is definitely the best sculpted. Don't get me wrong, Gwen looks pretty good, and between her torso, her arms, and her sneakers, she definitely has a lot more painted detail, but Peter's proportions simply look a lot closer to what we saw in the film. Actually, upon closer inspection, Gwen's shoes have been re-sculpted. The only figure that's completely new is Spider-Man 2099, and I personally think he's the best of the bunch. This is our first really good look at him from the new movie, so whether or not he's accurate, I honestly couldn't tell you. But the overall aesthetic definitely evokes the original comic. The main difference are all the panel lines and circuits. It definitely adds something to his look. Otherwise, he has his nice big skull-like spider logo, his very spawn-like mask, claw-like hands, red soles, lots more of that detail on the back, and his four-foot-long forearm fins. I don't quite remember that from the comic. Definitely a bit impractical, but I'm curious to see it in action. Even grading on a curve, I can't say these are great figures. A couple of them are okay. Spider-Man 2099 is definitely the standout. That said, for the overall wave, I'm giving across the Spider-Verse half a point. Moving on to posability, they all have the same basic articulation scheme. Their heads are on ball joints. The only one that can look up, though, is Miles. And he and Peter are the only ones that get any amount of down. The boys get a bit of tilt, Miles more so, and all the way around. All of them have swivel hinge shoulders that raise up over 90 degrees. Of course, when Miguel does it, he stabs himself in the throat. All of them have single jointed swivel elbows. <laughs> and T-style swivel hips. While I appreciate the articulation in the arms, some bendable knees and especially ankles would have really gone a long way to help. Even the Hall of Armor Iron Man had that, and he was for kids too. So for posability, I'm giving across the Spider-Verse half a point. Moving on to playability, and each figure comes with a snap-on webbing or energy effect. 
Miles has his signature Venom Strike. Nice bit of electric detail in there. Gwen comes with whatever this is. I want to say Marshmallow Fluff. Peter B. Parker comes with a stream of spaghetti webbing. Why, it almost looks like the ending of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. You know the scene. <coughs> Lastly, Spider-Man 2099 comes with this Energy Blast Magic Missile. The cool thing is if you wanted to, you could actually use some of these with your Marvel Legends. But playability is more than just accessories. It's also about how well your figure plays with others. For some other End of the Spider-Verse style figures, and here we have Peter B. Parker from Marvel Legends. Here we have the Marvel Legends into the Spider-Verse Miles. The new one's a bit taller, but he has grown up a bit between movies, so that works. Here we have Spider-Gwen. I'm pretty surprised that these are the exact same size. Here we have Spider-Ham, voiced by the great John Mulaney. Given his limited detail and articulation, he looks great with these. And lastly, here we have Uncle Aaron. This segues perfectly to the comic book version of the Prowler, and to some other Spider-Man villains. Here we have the Green Goblin from the Toy Biz Marvel Legends Series 10. Here we have Sandman. I'd love to see what this animation team Team could do with him. Here we have Craven the Hunter. He's missing his loincloth, but for $20 loose at a toy show, I'm happy. Of course, we have Carnage from the Venom Pool Wave. Here we have Mysterio. I added some pillow stuffing to his helmet to give him some extra razzmatazz. Since he shares so much unpainted line work, here we have Shocker. Here we have Electro. Guessing Miles' Venom Strike wouldn't work on him. Here they are with Venom. And for one last villain, here we have Leapfrog. Or for another hero, here we have Frogman. Speaking of heroes, for another basic Marvel movie figure, here we have the Mighty Thor. Technically, because of her swinging hammer, she's a deluxe. For a 5-inch Spider-Man, here we have this one by Toy Biz. But for some 6-inch ones, here's this one by Toy Biz. Pizza Spidey and Retro Spidey. For a couple of miles, and here we have the Gamerverse version and the Invisible One. Oh, sorry, here you go. For my only other Spider-Gwen, and here's the original Marvel Legend. For just a couple of Spider-Man 2099s, and here we have the 6-inch Toy Biz one from the Spider-Man Classic series. And the recently re-released Marvel Legends Retro Card Repaint. Those forearm fins are nothing by comparison. Taking a dip into the broader comic book Spider-Verse, and here we have Ben Riley, Scarlet Spider, Spider-Punk. I could see a great love triangle between him and Miles over Gwen. Here we have Spider-Man Noir. I'm still undecided if I'm going to get the new one. Here we have the Ultimate Spider-Woman, Arachne, Mayday Parker, and Spider-Rex. For a couple of MCU comparisons, and here we have Far From Home, and Zombie Slayer from What If. I bring these out to spotlight just how cheap it looks when they don't paint in the web lines. And on that subject, for a 7-inch scale comparison, here they are with the Marvel Select Spectacular Spider-Man. His web lines are both sculpted and painted. And as always, here they are with Stealth Iron Man. Side note, YouTube user Trayvon pointed out in the comments that this week is the one-year anniversary of the original Stealth Iron Man video. Thank you so much, Trayvon, for pointing that out. Here's to many more. Oh, and for a sculpted head with a painted body comparison, here's Miles with Spider-Man from the Alleyway playset. If only someone at Hasbro had seen this, maybe we could have gotten a new Miles head. On the subject of heads, I know at least some of you might be wondering about head swaps. Boy, am I good at segues. The good news is that if you wanted to, you could put the Spider-Man head on the Peter B. Parker body for a masked look. It's a little bit small and a little bit loose, but with some sticky tack, it would create a pretty fun option. The bad news is that you can't do it the other way around. If you wanted to sacrifice the head by dremeling it out, it's possible. But otherwise, this ball is simply too big. And considering we never got a proper Marvel Legends of this particular Peter B. Parker look, that is a shame. More good news, if you wanted to, you could put the Marvel Legends Gwen head on the basic body, but to be honest, I'm not entirely sure why you'd want to. If you already have the Marvel Legends Gwen, it's pretty much superior in every conceivable way. And then more bad news, because the Marvel Legends Miles comes pre-loaded with this dumbbell joint, any head swap is sadly impossible. More good news, the Game Reverse version fits. If you like the look of this, more importantly, you can give him the unmasked Miles head. It doesn't fit the look of the movie, but it's something. Despite some of the limitations of this line, they're still fun to play with and do scale well with other figures. For playability, I'm giving this wave one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. And at just $10.99 a pop, they're a lot of fun and guilt-free. For price, I'm giving Across the Spider-Verse one whole point for a grand total of 4 out of 5. For more Miles Morales, check out this video on the Game Reverse version. Or for my complete thoughts on the windowless packaging, check out this video on the Mighty Thor. As Spider-Man movies go, where does Into the Spider-Verse rank for you? Sound off in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.